What is going on everyone? James with Urban Bass Layers out here in the bait room today and I'm going to be painting these two guys with this pattern showing you guys really how simple this pattern is. Uh, I found another guy online that paints this pattern and I copied it and I threw a little bit of my own flair on it. Uh, I'm going to be changing a little bit of the color on the gills I think. I'm going to swap these two colors back and forth. I'm going to do the blue first then sepia over it see if that pops out and lightens up that gill I think those gill plates on these guys are a little bit dark I don't know could just be me okay so what we got here in the bait room today is I've cut out some stencils I took some clear plastic made a stencil for the gill plate um, this guy I made a stencil also for the fins and then I made the actual fin thing and then this guy comes back over the gill plate for the color over the gill if you can see that on that guy that's color shift blue on there that's this uh, folk art color right here and I'll show you the colors that I got going so we got some some cleaner obviously a little bit of reducer the, the createx opaque white it's a little bit thick some of the other colors are thick. This is really thick, so it needs a lot of reducer. It's like a 50-50, maybe even a little bit more than that with the reducer. I just got a dark grass green, a silver, it's a Mia color, it's a Mia color orange. I just ordered this. You can get these online. I got the white, I got black, I got detail sepia. And then the fluorescent yellow, which is basically chartreuse. And I got the old ye old comb, which does the lines on the sides of the bait. This comb I found out at Tanzanite Park, which is funny. So I keep that in my bait room. It's got those nice lines on it. And then I also have this wrap. I went to uh, Joanne Fabric and I found this stuff. Uh, I forget what it was called. But it's just like a material and you can buy it by the yard and it's pretty cool what i did was i went along and i cut some holes in spots to make little bigger holes on there so when you wrap it on there you'll get some chunkier spots i got alligator clips to hold the wrap on and then what i also have is i went over the color chart and what to start with so it'll be a white base with silver chartreuse on the back and the sides dark green on the head orange on the back and sides then you wrap the bait you do sepia over the entire top and down the sides then you unwrap it use a stencil for or well the comb for the sidelines then you do white on the gills then you do the the turquoise or however I'm gonna do that and then the last step is to do the orange on the bottom and blend it all together and yeah and I got the oh and then go back over the top with a little bit of black and blend that all together with the black but I mean these things came out awesome this is the first time I ever tried to do a bluegill pattern so anyways bear with me guys lighting out here is not the greatest all right so the first step here is gonna be to put a base coat on this and I'm just gonna use some opaque white Createx opaque white and I'm gonna spray the entire baits both of them inside out the whole thing these two guys are really hard to keep on these because they have swivel uh, things on them for the hooks swivel hook things and uh, yeah so they're a pain in the butt to keep on here anyways I'm gonna be having some trouble and struggling with this as I go but anyways we're gonna get it done uh, got my old 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 badger airbrush i'm about to buy an iwata uh, my next paycheck i am buying an iwata so this is just some old janky uh, badger airbrush that i use it's uh it's, gets the job done that's all i can say <laughs> all right i'm not going to talk during this part because it's going to be really loud anyways
All right, guys. So we got both these guys base coated. And yeah, I want to give you a quick uh, tip. I just got this kind of janky little setup here. And what I do is I keep a little bit of water right here. You want to keep your airbrush lubed and you want to keep it clean. The most important part about doing this whole thing is keeping your airbrush clean. So I'm always taking a little tiny bit of cleaner, put a couple drops in there, and hit that thing while it's on just to spray it out. Another thing I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll just dip the cup in there and I'll spray the water through there to help get the, the uh, excess paint out of there. Anyways, a little tip on that. Now this next step, we're done with the white. We're gonna next go to the silver and then we go in the order of this and let's do this. Alright, so so far I got the white base, silver on, the chartreuse, and then the green. I killed that green. I gotta get some more. I gotta get something that's close to that. It's just gotta be a dark green. Uh, I've had that stuff for a long time. I finally killed that thing. Anyways, next step is going to be to wrap these guys with this material. And this is where the magic happens. This detail sepia, man. This stuff, I had to get it online. You can't really get it at Hobby Lobby unless your Hobby Lobby is really cool and they got some cool colors because mine just has the basics. Um, anyways, I'm going to wrap these guys and this is where the magic happens. Alright guys, so I usually do these like one at a time when I wrap them. What I do is I just wrap that guy and I take the alligator clips and I get it pinned around where I need it. You can see it's a little bit loose right here. I might tighten that up. And besides that.
Alright everyone, so we got this far, and at this point the baits are looking really good. Um, the next step on the list is to do the gills, and then we're going to do the fins, and button it all up. So the next step on this is to use some of these stencils that I hand cut. Took some old plastic that you can see through, and I can draw the actual lines through the plastic so I can see exactly where it needs to be and then I cut it out and then I also like I said I made the little fins for it to be able to do the fins and then that on the gill plate yeah anyways so this part's gonna be fun I'm just gonna paint it all out and you guys can kind of see how I do it it's gonna layer the white onto the gill plate then you move the stencil a little bit forward, you spray some black, and you kind of blend the black fo forward a little bit. Then I'm going to come back with the turquoise, or the color shift blue, and I'm going to blend that back that way. And then I'm going to throw the stencil on it and throw some sepia on it. See if that works. Alright guys, so this stuff is like super duper thick. When I say thick, I mean thick. I put a bunch of reducer in the cup. See how thick this stuff comes out? I mean, it is thick. So you gotta put a lot of reducer in there. And what I do is I'll just take a uh, old paper clip or something like this and I'm just kind of mix it in the cup oops don't want to spill it out just mix it in the cup because of the type of airbrush this is can't really back flush it so just get some of that mixed up in there i'm going to spray this on the sides of the gills on these guys right here and we'll go from there Help put it in the cup. All right, guys. So the next step here <clears throat> is to take this uh, orange. It's just a really bright orange. I like this stuff. It flows really good. I've tried a few other oranges. 
like the wicked colors orange i mean it's pretty good it's just you have to really layer this stuff as opposed to this stuff when i originally got this airbrush from somebody it was for uh painting like fingernails and stuff so i had like a whole fingernail painting kit which is kind of funny but it had all these old japanese colors all the tamiya colors all these guys and i mean these colors are really good man really not that expensive either because i bought this one it was only three bucks for this guy and i'm sure i'm gonna get my three dollars worth of this guy so anyways what we're doing with this orange is we're gonna spray the belly all the way back to about the tail here with this orange and it's gonna blend everything together let's do this Alright, so the last step here is to take some opaque black and to spray just a little on the face and down the back to blend it all together and a little on the face here and then a couple detail things and wrap it up, that's it. Wicked red, a little bit of wood, a little paintbrush, the thing a little bit wet. See a little bit on the corner there. I know most bluegills don't have the red dot, it's usually pumpkin seeds and stuff, but it just kind of pops the bait off here. Gives the uh, bass something to see and something to target in on. Just a little dot there. Don't have to be perfect. Nothing in nature is perfect. These guys are just about finished. I did little lines on the on the fans and then a little bit of a shadow there too. Don't have to be too big. Just has to be there. Like I said, it just gives the fish something to target it on. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, these guys are finished. Next step is to let these dry for a little while, throw some eyeballs on them, and then two ton epoxy coat them. Yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. Oops. I switched around the gill, the gill plate. Looks all right. I like both of them. They both look good. 
This one kind of pops a little more. I think I might stick with that pattern in the in the future. Anyways, some bass slayers out here in the bait room, making some fire. Fire in the bait room. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. I don't know if this guy got enough bars with that sepia. I might throw some sepia back on that guy right, right there with those bars. Besides that, these guys are going to dry. And that is it, Urban Bass Thanks for watching, guys.